All right, in today's video, what I wanted to go over is your mass airflow sensor, how to clean it, and also how to remove it. So the reason where you'd want to clean your mass airflow sensor is it measures grams per second of how much air is actually flowing in through your air intake. And there's a little hot wire on there. And if that hot wire becomes a little bit dirty, it's not exactly measuring the amount of air properly in grams per second. So what will happen is you might not get exactly enough fuel or too much fuel that's getting mixed in with your air. That's why they call it the air to fuel ratio mixture. So when cleaning your mass airflow sensor, what happens is you see like your hesitation will go away or you'd see improved uh, miles per gallon. So they recommend on the bottle, I'll show you, it says once every, every time you change your air filter, they want you to clean the mass airflow sensor. Well, I never do that. Maybe every other filter change when I change my air filter. So you feel free to clean it as many times as you want but it says on the instructions, they recommend it every time you change your air filter to go ahead and clean the mass airflow sensor. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll show you what supplies you need and what tools, the 20 Torx bit you need to actually take the little sensor off and then the flathead and let's get started. Go ahead and pop the hood. All right, now that the hood is open, I went ahead and printed out the instructions from the service manual on what is necessary when cleaning the mass airflow sensor. So usually in electronics, it's a good idea to unplug the negative battery cable. But according to the service manual, it's unnecessary. The only thing it really says is to make sure you do not shock the mass airflow sensor, do not disassemble it, and do not touch the sensor. So here's the cleaner that you will use. It makes a pretty bold statement on here that you're gonna gain four to 10 wheel horse horsepower at the wheels. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but it'll definitely improve your gas mileage and take out the hesitation. The, I think it's step number three. It says unplug the MAF wire hardness, remove the MAF housing, and then it says if a screwdriver will not work, you will need a T20 Torx security bit, which I do have. All right, so I always I have a little tool kit in the back of my car because you can take this whole car apart with an 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17 millimeter ratchets. So Motordyne gives you this little, uh, I guess you'd say, screwdriver kit and I just put my T20 Torx bit inside of it which is right here. So this is what you will need with a screwdriver to go ahead and remove the mass airflow sensor. Shout out to whoever, my fan that told me that these black uh, disposable gloves I should use instead of the, uh, the other latex ones are way better for working on cars and he's absolutely right. These gloves are actually fantastic so thank you. So for mine, my mass airflow sensor is right here. So we're gonna have to unplug this harness. It comes off just like that. And unfortunately, I'm pretty sure I remember doing this before, that whenever I pull this out, this hits the AC line. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and remove the air intake. So I just have to remove this rat, um, the screw here, and then the screw here. I know you guys are probably wondering why I haven't done the admin intake yet, the one that's 3.5 inch. The problem with all these other intakes is by the math, even though this is 3.5 inches all the way up, right here you can see it tapers down to 2.78 by the math. Um, the reason the admin intake makes more power is because it's 3.5 all the way through. So the reason I haven't moved forward with it is yes, a short ram air intake that sucks right here will still make more power than this engine intake. I originally wanted to do his cold air intake. The thing with his cold air intake, which no one's really done yet on a G35, is you have to move these AC lines and then you also have to drill a hole through the core support that's 3.5 inches. So instead of the tube going down this way, it goes up through here and then it'll wrap back and around and then the filter will be down in there. It's just something I haven't done yet. It doesn't mean I don't want to do it. Um, I just, I, I've talked to Mon Seth. We have to remove the AC lines. I'll get around to it here eventually. 10 millimeter wrench to loosen this off. Lefty loosey. All right, we're just gonna pull it loose like this. And then it should come out pretty easy up here too. And my throttle body should be spotless because I don't have any oil vapors going into mine because I got it blocked off with this. So I shouldn't have to clean my throttle body, but we will see.
Yep, he looks pretty spotless. So let's go ahead and remove these T20 uh, screws out of here. They're T20 Torx screws. So I've already finger loosened this one. And then let's get this one over here. Need my shaky hands from too much coffee today. So here's actually what the head on one of these T20 Torx bits looks like. So let's remember when we take out the mass airflow sensor which direction it was in. So you just want to gently slide it out and then right there you're going to be able to see the hot wire. So this is which way the airflow is coming from. So remember it goes in this way. Okay, according to the instructions on here you want to give 10 to 15 squirts inside the mass airflow sensor. So 10 to 15, huh? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Let that dry. You're going to let this dry for about 15 minutes. Um, it dries very quickly, as you can see. This here on the ground is already evaporating basically instantly. So, and there, as you can see, it is just completely disappeared right in front of your eyes. So yeah, this is the hot wire that's inside the mass airflow sensor. This does grams per second of how much air per gram of air is moving across it. So it's very sensitive. So using this mass airflow sensor cleaner is very beneficial. Okay, you wanna make sure you put this in the correct direction, the mass airflow sensor. So since air is actually flowing this direction, this is where the hot wire is. If you look on the back side of this, it's, there's nowhere for airflow. So this would be the correct direction to put it in. Just like this. And you want to be gentle with it. Don't shake it around. Now go ahead and just finger tight each side with the screws. That's what I do. Finger tight on each side. And once you've got them finger screwed in, go ahead and gently do each side the same, equally the same amount. So it's got equal pressure on both sides. It's just a good rule of thumb. Instead of torquing down one side, as tight as possible, and then starting with the other side. You don't have to torque these down very tight at all. Just, just snug. They already have washers on them, just snug. Next up is just go ahead and reinstall the air intake how you uninstalled it and if you guys decide to go ahead and clean your throttle body i have a bigger throttle body in here this is 75 millimeter you'll see scotty kilmore out there he's fingering the butterfly like it's nobody's business just fingering it back and forth good stuff spring all the crud out and you also want to push it with your finger so you can get inside and clean and also have a rag to wipe it all clean just look at all the crud that it's cleaned off. Well, he has an old Celica, 1994, I believe, around that age. You could do that. On your G35 or 350Z, if you finger the butterfly trying to clean it out, it'll mess up your idle. So for the people that are going to go ahead and do that, I'll go ahead and clip in how to do the idle relearn if you decide to clean your throttle body. Or if doing your math didn't fix your idling problem, doing the idle relearn will definitely fix your issue. So go ahead and cue that video. Okay, now after we go ahead and we get the car to normal operating temperature, we should have let it run for about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get a stopwatch out. This is the easiest way to do it because it's very accurate. You're gonna need to shut off all the electronics. This includes the AC, uh, any, anything that you have. You wanna make sure all the headlights, everything that is drawing current is shut off. Then we'll go ahead and shut the car off for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, after the car has been shut off for ten seconds, have your stop clock ready. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn you're gonna go ahead and turn the key on, hit start, wait three seconds, and you're gonna pound the pedal five times. One, two, three, four, five. 
and you have to do it before eight seconds. Then when it hits 15, you're gonna, 15 seconds, you're gonna push the pedal to the floor. This will make the check engine light. There it is, push it to the floor. This will make the check engine light blink. And as soon as it starts blinking, this helps reset the idle. See it blinking? So it, it'll continue to blink. As soon as it turns solid, you're gonna let go of the accelerator and turn the car on, at least for 20 seconds. Turn on. Now when the car is on, you have to let it rev a couple times to make sure the idle's right. So give it a couple seconds while it's on. Give it a couple revs. And this is how you do your idle relearn. So now the reason you'd want to do your idle relearn is there's a couple different reasons. You may, um, anytime you disconnect the throttle body, you have to do the idle relearn. Um, you may also be getting a high idle and that will throw an engine code, which is a P0507. Um, anytime the engine's not idling at 650 RPM, it's not idling where it should be. So you can do this simple test, uh, the idle relearn procedure like I just showed you how to do and that'll go ahead and give you a proper idle and get your car back to the way it should be. Okay, after you let the car idle for 25 seconds, or 20 seconds it actually says, that completes the idle relearn procedure. So here's the actual instructions if you want a copy of them. Resetting the ECU, I'll go over that later. Um, it's not required in this at all. It says right there, this step is not required. Um, there's a much easier task. Instead of doing the pedal dance, you can actually just disconnect the pedal uh, Disconnect the battery and then discharge the ECU capacitors. I'm going to do that on a separate video. But what we do, what we went over today was resetting the throttle body. So the steps, this one and two up here, the accelerator pedal release position procedure and the throttle valve close position uh, learning. I, I didn't really do those steps and I never really need to. It always works for me. So you may have to do those for it to work for you. And there's the instructions right there. But the clock layout that I have works the best, and it's, uh, I think, one of the easiest ways. Um, some of the other YouTube videos, they don't actually have a clock out, so it's hard to see. And what's confusing about it is step number six, where it says uh, you got to pound the pedal five times. And they're giving you a window of five seconds to do this in. So in the first three seconds, you need to pound the, pound the pedal five times. So you have to wait five seconds, though, after doing that. So that equals eight seconds, five plus three. So then you have to wait, step number eight, you have to wait seven seconds. So at 15, like I showed you on the clock, that's when you completely depress the pedal to the floor. At 15 seconds, you depress it to the floor and it says in 20 seconds, that check engine light uh, will stop blinking. So it starts blinking at about 11 seconds and then it'll stop blinking after 20. And once it stops blinking and is fully on, that's when you start the car. And after you start it, you wait for 20 seconds. So. That concludes today's video on the idle relearn procedure. Again, the reason you may have to do it is you touch the throttle body, the butterfly in it, when you were cleaning it. That requires you to do this procedure. Um, you uh, remove the throttle body and you disconnected the harness anytime you do that. Or if you're having a rough idle, this is what you would do to go ahead and get your idle back into spec and spec is 650 RPMs. That's what the car is from the factory. So appreciate you guys tuning into my video and uh, please feel free to leave comments below, hit the like button, and I'll talk to you guys next video.